Hello everyone, thanks for pressing play. You are watching a brand new episode of Talking Comics, Excalibur CCG TV, where every week we come together to get you ready for Wednesday. This week we are getting you ready for Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. Halloween's almost here. Tons of stuff is hitting the, 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 the shelf this week and we want you to be informed about it and make an educated and fun decision about what you check out this week. I am Chris. This is my co-host, Randy. We come together every week to tell you about the great stuff hitting the shelf. We are Excalibur Comics, Cards, and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana, as well as in Texarkana, Texas. And you can always find out what's going on with us at our website, ExcaliburCCG.com. How are you feeling, Randy? I'm super tired. Super, super <laughs> tired. That's, 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 that's one of the fun things about working in a comic shop. Anything you do is going to be enhanced. I got the super tired, super oh. bored... Super excited. <laughs> yeah. Super, no, super tired. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm all new, all different tired. There we go. I like that. Thank there you, sir. Go. Thank you, Something sir. I like that. Hey, guys, before we dive into everything, a couple of quick announcements. Uh, uh, still going on uh, at the Shreve Memorial uh, Broadmoor Branch Library. We still have the uh, Horror Month going on that Patrick Davis has put on there. Every Wednesday night leading up into October 24th is a different... Uh, horror movie that's played there that you can go and sit down and watch and have fun watching for free. Mm -hmm. uh, leading up to October 24th, where that night will culminate with a Riff Tracks edition of the original Night of the Living Dead movie. So it's going to be scary and fun all at the same time. You can go and have a blast. Uh, no strings attached. If you're like me, you don't believe in scary and fun at the same time. This guy, it's, it's totally against, totally against what he goes for. Ooh. But guys, that's here locally for all of our local people. Have fun with that. Also, for all of our non-locals, all of our friends and fans and subscribers here on YouTube, Stitcher, iTunes, uh, Chris at We Love Comics, the YouTube channel that we follow, friend of our channel, friend of the comic book community here on YouTube, is still having a giveaway. The link is down in the description below. Click on that link. Go over and check out the giveaway that Chris is doing because uh, 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 um, an international winner is going to be chosen and a USA winner is going to be chosen uh, from this giveaway. So have fun with that and enjoy the, uh, the items that Chris has to give away. Thanks for doing that, Chris. Uh, moving on, guys. That's it. We've got some great number ones. There are tons of tons of number ones hitting this week. We're going to be highlighting some of the uh, more popular ones. Uh, some of them, some others will be coming out that, that will have just a limited quantity. Yeah. And, and really, it's just for people that pre-order it. But we've got some good stuff hitting this week. Right. Yeah. One of the things to remember is that though this show is out there for everybody to watch, it's also one of those things that are are local people who walk into the shop can take a look at and see what's going to be in the shop here and uh, you know that's going to be one of those things that if there's a, a smaller press that's putting out a number one book and it's coming out this Wednesday and maybe we're getting one or two copies of it it's already most likely going to be spoken for sometimes it's not but it will go if it's not probably go fairly quickly with someone picking it up just to look and see what it is and with those small press ones, let's be honest with each other, it's uh, it's probably going to be sold out already. So it's going to be tougher for us to get that back in, exactly. uh, especially for the people looking for a first print right. on something like that. Right. So what we do here, we're highlighting the stuff that is like the big mega main stuff here that we're getting in at the shop that we're trying to get people interested in buying. If you want to get the smaller stuff, right? pre-order. That's okay. how we grow those sales and have that and, and dedicate a little more time to talk about that. Exactly. That's just the it's just the nature of the beast, good or bad. And it can it can be different for different areas. Exactly. Where, where your comic shop's at, maybe one of these titles that we're not covering this week is a huge seller. Exactly. There. But in our particular area, that's not, and so it's not one of the things we'll focus the video on. Exactly. So, Sorry. let's go ahead and dive into some of the bigger stuff that's coming out this week. Yeah. With Astonishing Ant-Man number one. Same creative team that's been on it before. Nick Spencer, uh, Ramon Rosanos. Uh, love this creative team. They've done a fantastic job with the previous volume, returning for this next volume. And we all kind of know the story of Scott Lang and how he becomes Hank Pym. You know, he gets blessed by... I mean, how he becomes Ant-Man. <laughs> wow. Becomes, yeah, how he becomes Ant-Man. He gets blessed by Hank Pym and... 
Uh, he gets the ability to use the suit and stuff, and he wants to be a hero for his daughter. But this number one issue is taking a look at there's a, a curveball thrown in Scott Lang's life. And will he be able to be the hero that he wants to be for himself, for his daughter, for his family? Or will he become a villain? How is that going to turn out? Uh, the coverage of this is very intriguing for me as well, so I'm really, really looking forward to checking this out. Yeah, pay attention to the cross fingers. Yeah, we also have another huge one from Marvel with their big push that they're doing, uh, Un Uncanny Inhumans. Number one coming out, Charles Soule, Steve McNiven, uh, kind of a, a big blockbuster team there. We're taking a look at, you have the uh, Inhuman crew, Black Bolt, kind of one of your ordinaries there, Triton, Medusa, your ordinary people, Reader, wait, who's this guy? I don't know, that name doesn't ring a bell with me. Human Torch, wait, hold on. Right. Fantastic Four, what? Beast, hey, X-Men, that's not right. Well guys, it's eight months later, and you have a totally new, totally different uh, thing happening here. One of the things that will be a little shocking is that Johnny uh, Storm and Medusa are dating. That's uh, Medusa? Yeah, Medusa. Not Crystal? Medusa and Johnny Storm are an item. I did not I didn't even look at that, to be honest with you, so uh, that's news to me. We also have Black Bolt doing stuff kind of on his own that maybe the rest of the group isn't uh, realizing that he's doing. And something has happened that is so big there between the Inhumans and the X-Men that it has made uh, Beast switch sides. So there's a whole lot going on here and uh, nice. a lot to fill in with the eight months gap between Secret Wars and number one. So, nice. Uh, this guy doesn't even know what all's happening in that huge book. I slept. What can I say? Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I especially like, uh, especially like how you can do the. the uh, they've been doing like the so many months later type yeah. aspect of storytelling where you have this gap and and it gives you such a rich, fertile storytelling ground to to launch from. Uh, with some of these stories, so I'm really really looking forward to that. One of the other things that that comes from though is that. When Secret Wars came out, mm -hmm. they had that big gap between the issues. Exactly. Where Amazing Spider-Man uh, 261 and 262, red and blue costume, black and white costume, right. and it's a year later, and right. the Secret Wars fills that in. So they've done a little twist on that, their own twist on that. Yeah. So it's so another homage that Marvel's doing that some people might not catch. Yes, yes, and Steve McNiven art, yes, I'm going to be checking that out. Guys, another one that's probably going to be my pick of the week, top of the list, is Karnak, number one. This is, a, if you've never heard of Karnak, he is an inhuman. He is the guy that sees the flaw in everything. That is his inhuman ability. This is by uh, Warren Ellis and Gerardo Zafina. I'm not very familiar with Zafina, but uh, I'm going to be checking this out because I love Warren Ellis and love what he's doing. This takes a look at Karnak and how he lives his life because he sees the flaw in everything. He, he can see the, system, the flaw in systems, philosophies, people, structures, everything. But this takes a look at Phil Coulson coming to Karnak, finding him with the problem that he has, and seeing if Karnak can help him with what is going on. The implications of that just may terrify everybody involved. So I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, another one that, that's going to be kind of a big with uh, her fan base here is Clean Room from Vertigo Comics. And this is going to be Gail Simone writing her first Vertigo title. Yeah. We have a 2000 AD uh, artist coming on board, John Davis Hunt, to help tell the story here. With this, we're taking a look at the world of uh, professional book writing as it pertains to uh, self-help or psychological books and uh, what we have is the character, let me find his name, uh, Astrid Mueller is going to be our character that has created this book and there's a person that within months of picking it up kills himself. Okay. So what is it about this guy's words that is so powerful and and affects people uh, here? So that's going to be kind of the look. We also have a journalist. I guess maybe she's exploring that aspect okay. of it, while maybe also getting sucked into life or, or you know delving into that world there. So okay. uh, it's it's going to be a very different book for Gail Simone from what we've seen before because usually, I mean, it's been Red Sonia lately, but a lot of superhero stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. a little different. Yeah. Check that out totally, man. 
Uh, guys, not to leave DC out, they've got a new number one hitting this week as well. Are there any Titans fans out there? Because if there is, we have Titans Hunt, number one, hitting the shelf this week. This is a maxi series, 10 or 12 issues. 12. 12 issues uh, by Dan Abnett and Paulo Sequeira. Uh, this is happening after the events of Convergence, uh, the big Convergence event that happened a while ago. And there's a young precog by the name of Lilith who keeps having these visions. Who are these team of Titans that, that she keeps seeing? Uh, why does she feel compelled to seek out Dick Grayson, Roy Harper, Donna Troy, and some person that's a, a named Garth that may be Atlantean? What is going on with all that? Also, who is Mal? Who is Nark? Who is Hank Hall? Who is Don Granger? What is their connection to all this? And what is their connection to the fate of Earth? This is what they're going to be taking a look at in this 12-issue maxi series with the Titans. I think you're going to get a lot of Titans in this yeah. series. Yeah, two of those names I'm at least familiar with uh, there. Yeah, so I'm not sure how much of that is, is going to be mixed up with some of the different uh, different characters from the different worlds of the Convergence universe, how yeah. it's all going to be put together. But with that with that is said, I'm sure there's going to be a multiversity aspect to it all. Have fun with that and enjoy yeah, that. Should be fun. Uh, finally, coming from uh, well, both Archie Studios and Dark Circle, uh, because that's kind of their more mature imprint that they have there, mm -hmm. we're going to have, finally, very overdue, Shield number one. Yes. Very late. Uh, and with this book, it's a new ongoing series that takes a look that any time the country has been uh, just at its, at its lowest, mm -hmm. the most blackest of days, uh, you know, when brightest day, blackest no, wrong book, right. uh, wrong book, <laughs> blackest of days, uh, then the spirit of the revolution reappears, and yeah. the the spirit of the revolution goes by the, the particular moniker uh, Shield mm -hmm. within this, and with this, every single time, you know, the Shield has appeared and helped write and fight, um, you know, for the country. Mm -hmm. This time, though. She doesn't have her memory, and uh, as to what's happened before, or even who she is. So it's going to to take her kind of figuring out who she is before she can help the country here. Yes. It should be an interesting read. Uh, I'm not familiar with the the creative team, Madam Christopher, and uh, what is it, David Williams? I love David Williams. He loves David Williams. Uh, I'm not familiar with Adam Christopher as a writer. Uh, but David Williams has been relegated to one of those cover artists, you know, like Dave Johnson, and oh, you know, really? and does very little interior work. So them snagging Dave Williams to do interiors on this is a plus. Plus, for me personally, uh, Dave Williams' artwork reminds me a good bit of Mike Ringo's artwork. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe a bit more modern, you know, modernized. Uh, yeah. So I'm really looking forward to checking this out and seeing the work that David Williams is doing. And it should, hopefully it'll be a, a, a great series on, he, on top of that. Blindside me with that. I love his work. Oh. Yeah, he's done tons of uh, <laughs> tons of covers and stuff. Uh, just, yeah, I really really dug his artwork uh, over the years. Uh, so, guys, those are, some of, those are some of the number ones. Quick mention, we've got Back to the Future number one coming out. There's Cognetic. There's just a bunch of different Rook. ones. Rook. There's a ton of other ones uh, that we'll have in limited supply here. Your store may have in greater supply, so be sure and ask about all the new number ones that came out this week as well. And also, always that. feel free telling us about if you picked any of them up and yes, read them. There. please. Please tell us about that. Yes. So we got some storylines to cover as well. Yeah. So diving into the storylines, let's start off with Justice League number 45. Dark Side War continues. And this is a special issue because Jason Fabok gets a break from this issue. Francis Manipal comes over and works with Jeff Johns on the art for this oh. issue right here. And after the events of last issue, we get to see that there are several Justice League members that are as powerful as gods. And we get to take a look at yeah. this, and, and, and will how will that affect them? Will it destroy them? Will they be able to take care of it? What price are they paying to have this type of power? And we get to see Wonder Woman and Miracle Man teaming up to help the League and, and, and face the new gods and hold on to their humanity with this issue. So have fun with that, guys. I've been digging the Dark Side War so far. Uh, yeah, we also have, again, some of the uh, Secret Wars titles yes. wrapping up here. Uh, one of the ones I've been reading and loving has been 1872. 1872. It wraps up with number four. The, everything seems to uh, be coming to the climax uh, here in this story. Uh, we're going to see if they're going to be able to prevail over Roxon and, and Fisk, or if uh, uh, Red Wolf and uh, Widow and all the others are going to fail. We also, uh, you know, don't forget about Doc Banner, who... Uh, 
just you know was put through the, the ringer there. We'll see what exactly is going on with them. It's been fun and uh, we'll probably see what's going to be happening with Red Wolf beyond this series. There we go. I, I'm, I am interested to see what they do with him beyond this. So there we go guys. Age of Apocalypse number five hits this week asking the question if Apocalypse falls who will rule in his place because his motto has always been let the fittest survive. And this issue may see him fall. So we will get to find out what is going on here with the plague that's been devastating the mutants. What's been going on here with all this uh, with this, and the possibility of Apocalypse being taken out of the picture. Yeah. Uh, I've got a cool one that I don't even remember this being solicited uh, in, yeah. before. And this just came out of the blue. Uh, Secret Wars Agents of Atlas. I love the Agents of Atlas, and usually Jeff Parker's the person handling the chores on Agents of Atlas. However, this time it's Tom Taylor that's going to be writing it, okay. and beautiful Steve Pugh art yes. on the book. This is going to take a look at one of the domains that apparently is uh, run by Baron Zemo. Ah. And the rebellion involves uh, Gorilla Man, and uh, who is it, M11 Namora. Uh, Marvel Boy, and the, uh, it just happens that their leader, Jimmy Woo, is captured. So it's up to uh, possibly Phil Coulson to uh, help them uh, overcome things. Sounds really good. Uh, I just, I don't ever remember seeing this list. I guess they snuck it in under the radar, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this? And I was looking through everything, and, and it was like, oh man, I love my agents of, of Atlas. They're good, guys. If you've never read this stuff, it's fun. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. I didn't get a chance. I, I, when that series was going on, there was, there was always like this uh, critical, critically acclaimed undertone going on with it, but I never checked it out, so yeah, it should be fun. That, that was right there along the time that Jeff Parker was also writing that awesome uh, run on Thunderbolts uh, uh, following Warren Ellis there okay. that had them kind of going through different time periods. Yeah. Great stuff. Cool. Check out either one of those guys. Uh, last one, too, for the uh, Secret Wars Battle World tie-ins. We have Weird, Weird World, number five, hitting this week. To sum it up, it is Archon versus Morgan Le Fay. What will happen? Who will win? And what will the outcome be? Boom. Those are your storylines yes, for are. this week. Uh, I, you, know, I, you know, I was trying to think, what, what is the next storyline for DC? But, you know, I, I, if someone knows, <laughs> let me know. Because we've kind of, I don't know, they, they've gone through a couple of them there. With the convergence and the Superman stuff, and I don't think so, they've announced anything yet. I, I haven't mean, seen kind it. of everything. The the big stuff form is the truth lies there with Superman, yeah. and then the um, uh, Dark Side War. Yeah. So there we go, guys. Those are your storylines for this week. Now it's time for some of our favorites. These are going to be the books that are at the top of our stacks when we pick them up this week. First things that we read, Randy, what's going to be your first books? I've got uh, Darth Vader number, which one is it, nine? Is it yeah, ten, something? Like it's, ten. it's something like that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> 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 it's coming out. We get to see that uh, you know they've had somebody investigating uh, Darth Vader here, and, and uh, every we're going to get to see exactly what, I guess, his consensus of what's going on is. Right. Uh, we're also taking a look at Martian Manhunter number five comes out, okay. and uh, there's, there's something really big coming towards Earth uh, and there's lots of people that somehow in some way are claiming that they are Martian Manhunter so it's just okay. a whole bunch of messed up fun have you been reading that? Yeah I've been checking so it out I don't remember the giant thing coming Can there me. towards Earth yeah. Yeah. the moon the moon yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's you know it's there in the sky and then suddenly they're like wait where is it and uh, well there it is it looks you know, horrendous beasts yes. kind of thing. So it's it's a good series. Yeah, it's been very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, for me, Invincible number 124. This is basically Kirkman taking Invincible and rebooting him to an extent. Uh, the, it, we're going back to square one with this issue. My, Mark finds himself without his powers. He's back home. He's aware of everything that he's lived through. And the question is, what did he, what does he do to change and or save Everything that's happened, and how does he deal with his father knowing what's coming? Because I think this is going to take place before he and his father have the huge battle that they have early on in the series. Oh, okay. Uh, and so there we go. I'm, I'm looking forward to what Kirkman's going to do with this and have fun with that. Another one that I'm really digging as well is uh, The Tithe. Number six hits this week. This is Islamophobia, part two of the storyline that's going on. And we get to take a look at how hypocrisy hits new heights with this issue. Digging this series. Uh, this is like this is the same creative team that's doing Postal as well, oh, uh, especially the, well, the writer at least. 
Uh, so I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. And both series have been really good as far as I'm concerned. That was uh, Darth Vader number 11, guys. Number 11? We also have the mm-hmm. second issue of Inv- Invincible Iron Man coming out. That was a fun read. Yeah, it was a fun um, read. Very so much so. We'll, we'll, we're already getting to see what's next in Invincible Iron Man and the Amazing Spider-Man. I mean, it's it's kicking into high gear. Yeah, there. they drop quick, like two weeks later. Yeah. You know, so boom. Yeah. You know, I kind of like that. Actually, <laughs> with stuff that I like, I do like right. that. I like more of it quicker. So, guys, those are our favorites hitting this week. Tell us yours in the comments down below because we want to have a conversation with you about that. And now, you know what time it is. It's time for our question of the week. And, guys, we're keeping it simple and fun, and we want you to make a choice. And that choice is simply this. Lex Luthor versus Tony Stark. Who wins? (laughs) Boom. you got to tell us. Lex Luthor versus Tony Stark. Who wins? Yes, they can use armor. Lex Luthor versus Tony Stark. Who wins? I saw I saw this somewhere here recently, and it was quite controversial. The comments that I was were, was getting for both sides, and I was like, ah, "Interesting." So okay. if you had to choose, Randy, and, well, you, and you do, you're on the spot right now. Okay, I I am a Marvel fan. I'm, uh, I'm going to say uh, that. Uh, however. If there's one thing I know about Tony Stark, he is fairly self-destructive. Uh, and if there's one thing I know about Lex Luthor, he is he's always just like planning ahead there. Yeah. He, I, you know, his thing, I never I don't think he's his britches get too big for him with things. It just happens to be that <laughs> he he's blindsided by Superman. But so if we take away that and have him turn his focus on on Tony Stark, who's very similar to him, in that they're both big brains, big big budgets yeah. there. They both have the armor. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm going to go Lex Luthor on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think very- Luthor would be the one that I would choose there because I just I I think you know he he has to put up with things that are Stark like enough already with like. Uh, Brainiac and different things. So, yeah, I think he would be ready. Very cool. I mean, he's also he's also been the one who has taken and they Stark's tried it, never been that successful. But he has taken all of his technology and knowledge of like what to do and totally modernized and rebuilt uh, Metropolis mm-hmm. into like this better city than it ever was before. Yeah. So, I mean, he's you know. He's a guy that doesn't just talk big, but and you know make weapons and whatnot to, for his armor, but actually does something there. Very cool. But Lex Luthor, yeah, uh, great points. But I would go with Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor as well because I think Lex Luthor is when it comes to a battle and winning, he's the one that would the, what, cross the line. Oh, he would kill he shot. would be he would be willing to do the kill shot. Yeah, definitely, and take somebody out. So. I, I don't know. There's there's some, definitely some advantages of Tony Stark, but I think that when it when it boils when you when you boil it down to the desire to win, it would be Lex Luthor at, at whatever cost deemed necessary to yeah. do so. I just so. I think Stark shoots himself in the foot too often exactly. there, and 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 Luthor's <laughs> going to jump on something like that. Exactly. I mean, like like Luthor's opening salvo would be like a bottle of bourbon. Hey, buddy! Ha ha! Boom! Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I was just kidding. So, guys, tell us down below. These are just our opinions. If you think Tony Stark would win, tell us down below. If you think Lex Luthor would win, tell us down below. Let's have fun with this. Two votes for Lex Luthor. That's kind of crazy. I know. Seriously. So, here we go, guys. Have fun with that. And, guys, that that's a wrap right there. That's this week. Tons of great stuff hitting the shelf this week. Storylines wrapping up some of our favorites. And, hey, brain teaser. Lex Luthor versus Tony Stark. Have fun with that in the comments down below. So, guys, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Please take a moment to share the video, to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to all of our new subscribers and our listeners on iTunes and Stitcher. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks for being here and being a part of this community. We really are glad to have you here. So, guys, until next week, uh, that's really it. Anything else to add, sir? That's it. I'm uh, I'm about to go do some more remodeling of uh, Excalibur comics. Very good. <laughs> That's what this guy does. That's what I do. Come That's in, check. We just got in tons of pop vinyls. If you enjoy your pop vinyls.
there, there are tons of pop final bands, uh, fans here, and it's, it's crazy. Wow. So many. So many. So guys, wait, local guys, come check out the new stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. For all of our viewers, subscribers, li listeners, we really appreciate it. Until next week, take care. Read some great comics. Leave us a comment down below, and we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye.